Hey folks, it's Dr. Rowe. Do you like my backdrop here? Look at this. Big arrow going in one direction. <laughs> I can't get it to go right. Going in that direction against the opposite direction of most people. So I'm doing a really quick message to you because I'm actually in the middle of a, a, an online training today teaching people about property investing. And I'm here. Uh, I've got my equipment and everything set up, but I just want to take a couple of minutes to do a live to you on Facebook. And that was really around the subject of return on time invested versus return on investment. It's a conversation piece that I have quite often, certainly when I run the three day property trainings that I do, for example, or any kind of conversation with people about their money is I usually ask two questions. What, what sort of ROI are you getting right now on your money, but also what's the return on time invested that you're getting in what you're doing? So let me try and explain the difference of the two very quickly and do understand that this whole arrow that's above me here represents, there look, the critical point of contact where you meet opposition and you meet resistance from other people. So when you think differently to other people, you're gonna find there's a, there's a thrust against that and you've gotta decide, are you gonna carry on doing what you're doing? Um, are you going in the same direction as other people? Or are you going to flip around and go in the opposite direction? Because I think it's Warren Buffett says, observe the masses and do the opposite. <laughs> Meaning that most people just herd mentality in one direction. They'll work long hours. They'll chuck their money in the bank and maybe save up for it and spend a little bit. Or spend a lot most of the time and have very little left at the end of the month. And that's basically what the masses do. So this is a thinking that flips that round and then goes the opposite direction. Go goes literally that way. I have to mirror this, don't I, next time? Probably can do next time I do this. So return on investment. So when you put your money in the bank, 100 grand placed in the bank right now, let's put inflation aside from it because that becomes crazy when we start discussing that. But in a simple terms, if they offer you 1% on your money, that's a 1% return on investment. So 100 grand yields you 1,000 pounds back at the end of the year. Now, if you want to add inflation onto that just very quickly, if inflation is eroding the value of that by 2.5%, or whatever the rate is at that time, but I think it's roughly two and a half percent right now. What we're now talking about is a hundred grand's worth of money, only worth 97,500, but you've made a grand, so it's really worth 98,500, so you're down one and a half grand at the end of that year. That's scary. So return on investment from a monetary perspective is getting your money to work harder than where it is right now. And if there's an opportunity for that to happen, then of course you've got to make a decision. I can't give you financial advice, of course, because that's not the intention of this. Go seek independent financial advice from somebody else. But what I'm saying is, look at what am I making over here versus what I'm making over here. If you happen to be working with a property investor and they're offering you a return of 6% and you're making 1% in the bank, you're going to net out of that 5% up. If you're working with somebody who's offering you 1% and you're making 1% in the bank, there's no difference. If somebody offers you 2% and you're making 1% in the bank, then you might argue, yeah, it's still kind of low. But there'll be a point where you feel a comfortable amount of money. What's it worth to you? Do I want to leave it there losing money or do I want to make three grand in a year? Equally, if you're looking at a property investment where, you know, keeping it simple, you know, you do the deal, you put the money in. And if you've watched some of the other videos I've done, you'll kind of get basic principles of this. But when you buy a property and refurbish it in the future, what that allows you to do is add value. And that value allows a refinance. And when the refinance takes place, it allows you to pull equity out of the house, or more importantly, some of the funds that you put into the house. So let's say you go into a deal with 20K in, and after refinance, you pull 10 out, but you leave 10 in there. But that property after refinance is renting with a net cash flow per year of 5,000 pounds a year, five or 6,000, what's that, 450, 500 pounds a month net cash flow. So at the end of the year, you've made five to 6,000 pounds, call it five, and you've left 10,000 pounds in that deal. The same 10,000 in the bank we already know is gonna make very little, but the same 10,000 pounds in the property, forget capital growth, that's another conversation, another benefit, is this cash flow is gonna make you 5,000 profit, which is a 50% return on investment. Wow, all right, so in that case, would I rather leave the money in there and make me 50% return on investment, or take the money out and stick it back in the bank where it's only making 1% or 2%? So that's return on investment. So you've got to start to think differently to what most people do with their money. The other one I wanted to tackle with you is roti. And if you come from an Asian background or an African background, you know that roti um, is also a food, you know, like my Sri Lankan background, you know, roti is like this lovely flatbread, a bit like a japati, and you can have nice, you know, I mean, I, mean, I, I used to like my curried rotis. You go to 
to Barbados, they have, instead of pizza hut, they have roti huts. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about return on time invested. So if you go into a job, for example, and we just did a calculation this morning. I'll see if I can find it for you, actually. So with my audience, I was doing a calculation this morning, and we worked out, and you can see this, that um, different members of people, on different people watching on the uh, presentation today, but the average income was, well, people that were putting information ranged between 33 and 110K, probably an average more about 30 to 40. So we took a 50K salary, we worked out if somebody spends eight hours at work and two hours to travel, that's 10 hours a day, times five days a week, that's 50 hours a week. All right, 50 hours a week over there, 52 weeks minus four weeks holiday, that's 48 weeks a year, that's 2,400 hours. Take a 50,000 salary divided by 2,400, that's 20 pounds an hour. Or 30,000 pound, you're on 12 pound, 100,000 pound, you're on 40 pounds an hour. So I then said, okay, well, 12 to 40 pounds an hour, that's return on time invested in those jobs. And that, by the way, if you're on a 100 grand a year job, you're probably working more hours than that. And then I said, a HMO making 1,000 a month, if you put, call the letting agent and he spent 10 minutes on the phone, let's say you spent an hour on the phone, one hour talking to the letting agent about your HMO, you've made a thousand pound an hour that month. If you only spend 10 minutes because you had to deal with a little issue, but no longer than that, you might have made 6,000 pounds an hour that month from that one property. So what's my point? My point is that there are some asset vehicles, some asset classes where you put money in and your return on time invested is magnified massively and you get enough properties coming in, in that example, even a thousand pound out, but 6,000 is even better. Somewhere in between, most people aren't on the phone every, an hour every single month about one of their properties. I mean, letting agents will be out of business if they spend that long on the phone every single month on one property for each landlord. So your return on investment goes through the roof. Now, if you buy five, six, seven properties, suddenly your hourly rate goes through the roof as well. Why would you want to be in a job? And you weigh up that return on time invested. So imagine getting your work, your money working harder for you. And on top of that, you get your time working harder for you as well. I hope that makes sense. The whole point I'm trying to say here is I want you to think differently, to go against what the masses are thinking. Behave differently, act differently, invest with your money differently, invest with your time differently, and it will make a dramatic difference to your life. That was the message. I've got to get back to my teachings, finish off my lunch, and I shall see you on my next live. Roti.